to stay in the Spirit. Walk not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And the Bible teaches us that we need to be led by His Spirit. Now, I don't want you uh, to look at how other people have done it. Let's see how Jesus done it. And when we see how Jesus done it, then we can uh, have God give us the anointing and He will give us the, the, uh, the wisdom and the knowledge and the discernment to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Somebody say, follow in the footsteps of Jesus. I seen the other day on uh, Facebook, I seen uh, a bunch of doors lined up. How many know that God leads us through doors? Different doors in our ministry. God leads us through them doors. And, and I seen on Facebook where there was a long hallway and there was many doors there. And, and somebody had written on there and said, Praise God in the, in the hallway. So uh, every one of us has got a door that God wants us to walk through to minister to somebody. If you haven't went through that door yet, God says just praise Him in the hallway. Hallelujah. So what we have to do is learn to praise God in the hallway. When we're in a place that we feel like that we're standing still, we're in a place that we feel like that nothing's going forward or nothing's going backwards, nothing's going anywhere, we're standing still, God says praise Him in the hallway. Praise God anyway. That's pretty much what He's trying to tell us today. Praise God anyway. But today, I want to, let's go to Mark chapter 16. I want to deal with this today because I believe it will help you understand what I'm going to preach today as well. Because uh, I, I really believe that God's people need to be led by the Spirit. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, in uh, verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now I'm reading that right. He that believes shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now somebody read with me right here. It says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Can you read with me? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, these are the signs that is going to follow the true believer in Jesus Christ. First of all, we're going to experience salvation. You're going to experience salvation and faith and salvation. You're going to experience the power of God in grace, in salvation, in believing. And you're going to be baptized. Second of all, the Bible says He has already commanded you to go into all of the world and preach the gospel. So therefore, if He's commanded us to go into the world and preach the gospel and to believe in salvation and to believe in the power of His grace, I believe that the grace of God is far beyond what the human mind can comprehend. I believe that God sees down deep inside the heart of a man. See, you've got the body, soul, and spirit. And I, I know with everything in me that the Lord has taught us that in His Word that He's going to touch you in your body, your soul, and your spirit. Now, God touches you from the inside out. He touches your, uh, your soul, your your spirit and your body. He touches you. And that's why a lot of times when people come and they receive grace and they come to the old rugged cross and they receive the cross, uh, the, uh, the gospel of the cross, and they come down and they give their heart to the Lord, that's why a lot of times when they come down there, they begin to believe in God in a different way. They, uh, there's a, there's a, a faith that has uh, awakened inside of them and God is awakening His people. And 
the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. Now why did why did the Bible say that? Because he said if you are a true believer and you are truly operating in the Spirit of God, he says these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any devil thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Listen to this. In verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. That means, after God came and showed us how to operate and be led by the Spirit, Jesus came himself, and it was God in the flesh, and Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, came himself to teach us how to be led by the Spirit. Now the Bible says at this particular time he was sitting on the right hand of God. Verse 20 it says, And they went forth preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Now there's a lot of things right there explained in that passage of Scripture. Now I know that the Pentecostal people get tore up on these signs and follow them that believe they get caught up in uh, they get caught, caught up in casting out devils, they get caught up in speaking in tongues, they uh, they get caught up in all these different things. But we need to believe what the scripture says. Sister? Well, where, are you, where is that scripture that comes out Oh, that is in Luke chapter sixteen. I mean Mark. Mark chapter 16. Uh, start with verse 15 through verse 20. And we're at 19 right now. But the Bible says, And so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, He was received up into heaven. So therefore God is not physically with us. He's not physically with us. He is with us spiritually, but not physically. He is in us spiritually, but not physically. There is an invisible world, folks. Yes. There is an invisible world. And the invisible world is as real as the natural world. Jesus came for one purpose. He came to save all mankind. He came to teach us how to be led by the Spirit. And He came to teach us that there is an invisible world. Jesus brought the invisible world and the physical world back together. When Jesus came and He walked on earth, uh, the invisible world and the physical world became uh, uh, come back together because people were looking at what man was doing instead of what God was doing. People thought that they had to have a king. People thought that they had to have a high priest. Now Jesus became our high priest. And He is our high priest right now today interceding for me and you in heaven. But when I begin to read this, I begin to see in, in verse 20, the Bible says, And they went forth, they obeyed. They understood that this is what we're supposed to do and be as a believer. And they went forth preaching everywhere that, uh, and the Lord worked in with them. Now how did God work with them? He worked with them through the invisible world, through the Holy Ghost, through the Spirit of God. God will come down and help you through the invisible world. The Bible says, greater is He that's in you than he that's in the world. So what the Lord is going to do for you, whenever you need help, He's going to either move on somebody's heart, and He's going to manifest Himself through somebody. Or He's going to move on your heart and manifest Himself through you. So the invisible world is that in, in operation. So if we want to be connected to the invisible world, we've got to be full of His Spirit. We've got to have that Acts chapter 2 uh, experience. We've got to have uh, the Cornelius experience. The Bible says, as Peter began to speak, 
They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were amazed because even the Gentiles were speaking with the Holy Ghost. So what we're saying today is we need that infilling power of the Holy Ghost to take care of us, to fix us, to clean us up. But we also need the manifestation power of the Holy Ghost that overflows to help one another and to help other people where God can operate out of you. God wants us to step into the invisible world and to be moved by the invisible world. He wants us to listen to His Spirit, which is invisible. And I'm going to get to this uh, later on when I go to talking about the vocal gifts. I said, you know, you can you can blow. Now, did you see that come out of my mouth? You can't see my breath come out of my mouth, but it's invisible. But it's real. It has power. It has power to speak. God gave mankind the power to speak with the force of His breath. God breathed into the nostrils of man and He became a living soul. Somebody says, what's the difference between a man and an animal? A man has a soul and an animal doesn't. An animal does not have a soul. Even though it has the capabilities to be loyal to you, even though it has the capabilities uh, to listen and learn, and sometimes they listen and learn better than our children do. Come on, man. They have the capability, but an animal or a dog does not have a soul. Here, that's right. And but a man has a soul. The Bible says, and God breathed into the nostrils of a man, and he became a living soul. So God has been breathing ever since Genesis. God still breathing today through you. They they tell me that they've been to other uh, out in the outer space. They tell me that they've been to the moon, but they couldn't breathe there because God does not want them there. They tell me that they're trying to find life on Mars right now, but they ain't nobody going to find nothing until God gets ready to the timing of God. Everything is in the timing of God. So if we go forth and we're working with God and we're doing the things of God, begin to speak to me. The Spirit of God, the invisible world, began to speak to me and told me to stop by a grocery store. I said, okay. So I stopped by the grocery store and it gave me directions to go into that grocery store and it literally, the Holy Ghost literally showed me what to buy. He said, buy this, buy that. And it was everything just about that I didn't need and I didn't like. I bought at least three bags of groceries that I didn't need and I didn't buy. And I was ashamed to tell my wife about it when I got home, so I left it in the back of the car in the floorboard. And luckily, prayer meeting was about to start, and I didn't have to leave it back there at all. Now listen, church. God will lead you to do things, and you don't even know what He's doing. What I'm trying to tell you, that I went to prayer meeting and I thought, well, oh, I better go pray about this. I've spent money that, that uh, my wife's going to buy that. I've spent money on groceries that we, on groceries that we don't even like. And uh, uh, I hope we don't call it going to cause a big buzz. So I, I better go on down to the church and have prayer meeting tonight and find out what God's doing here. And I went down there and we had the prayer meeting. And there's a pretty good crowd there. And we prayed. And after the prayer meeting, this sister got up and said, I she said, I just want you to pray for me. She said, I'm out of groceries and I don't know what to do. So I went to 
the back of the church and I said, ma'am, I think I have your groceries in my back full board. Come on. So we went out there and come and find out she's a, a diabetic so she can only eat certain things and the exact things that I bought is what she was out of in her cabinet and in her house because I was led by the Spirit of God. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what God was doing. But I just, I just went ahead and I listened to God anyway. And because I listened to God, God blessed the woman with the food that she needed that night. And God will bless you if you're being led of God. So therefore, the Bible says, and the Lord with signs. Listen to Church God will go with you. He will watch over you. He will talk with you. He will inspire you. He will fill you. And then He will give you power. A lot of people don't understand. When you first come to God, you're only full of the Holy Ghost. But once you go out for God and you start your ministry and you do what God has called you to do, then you're full of the power of the Holy Ghost. He gives you the power. He empowers you to do what He needs you to do. In Luke chapter 4, let's go there. In Luke chapter 4, let's listen to the Scriptures. Because the Scriptures is what give us life. The Scriptures is what teaches us what we should do and what we shouldn't do. I want to talk just a few minutes here about how did I want us to find out how do we get to the place that God is talking about in Mark chapter 16. How do we get to that place? Prayer and fasting. Anybody else? How do we get to that place in Mark chapter 16? We get to that place by listening to the Spirit and being led of the Spirit. The Bible says here in verse 1, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were in him, he afterwards hungered. When you are desiring to do something great for the Lord and you become to the place that you hunger. Now, I know that Jesus was physically hungry. What I'm trying to tell you is that when God comes to you and He inspires you to walk through a door and you begin to hunger to work for God, you can get ready. The enemy is going to show up and he's going to tempt you just like he did Jesus. He's going to try to confuse you. He's going to try to get you to do things that you shouldn't do. He's going to try his best to lead you astray, to turn you away from the truth. He's going to try his best to uh, to uh, to dis to cause you to go in a, a way that you shouldn't go in. But what we read is to find out that Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. That means at this point in time, Jesus didn't have the power to do other things, but to walk in uh, to walk in the fullness of the Spirit. He wasn't he wasn't going around walking and doing miracles. This was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. The first thing that happened to Jesus is he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Church, I'm here to tell you. That whenever you become knowing Christ and Christ becomes real to you and you become full of the Spirit, there's going to be a time in your life that God's going to lead you into a place, the wilderness places. Now what did God do for the children of Israel? Now the children of Israel were in bondage for 400 years. God raised up a deliverer named Moses. Now Moses led the children out of Egypt. And when Moses led the children out of Egypt, Brother John, the Bible says they left Egypt with the wealth of Egypt. With the wealth of the, of the Egyptians. They left Egypt wealthy. 
They were not in bondage. There was not poor when they left Egypt. They were rich. They had silver and gold. They had things to make stuff with. They had. They were so rich that when G, when Moses came off of the Mount uh, Sinai, that he took up one offering and it lasted them for forty years. Come on, church. Now, God, I don't believe that God really wanted them to go through the wilderness for forty years, but He led them through the wilderness, and then we find. Then they were led by the Spirit through Moses. Moses was the type and shadow of Jesus at that particular time. And they were led. And the Bible said that every time they come to a problem, the people stood and murmured and complained. The devil, the spirit, uh, the enemy, the, 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 the spirit of the enemy spoke to them and said, Has he brought us out here to, to bury us in the wilderness? And every time, poor old Moses, I felt sorry for him when I was reading that scriptures. Poor old Moses, he was he was full of God, and he was full of the Holy. He was full of the Holy Spirit was leading him in one man. He wanted people to catch on to it, but it took them forty years. And do you know that they didn't even get to inherit the promised land because of their murmuring and complaining? Because the Lord. Because if you're not full of the Holy Ghost, you'll be just like the children. And the Bible says, in their carcass lay in the wilderness. They didn't get to obtain the only people. Who was the only people that got to go into the uh, promised land that came out of Egypt? Anybody know? Joseph. Joseph. Yes. So it was all those people that God delivered died in the wilderness because they refused to be led of God. I'm doing I'm, I'm trying to do a comparison between the the Old Testament and the New Testament. God says it don't take 40, 40 years to get through your wilderness. If you will obey him and listen to him and be led. He said, then I can take you to the promised land in the Spirit. So, the only person that got to go, Moses didn't get to go. You know why? Because Moses, instead of, instead of speaking to the rock with a verbal gift, instead of speaking to the rock, Moses hit the rock. He smoked the rock. And the water came gushing out. Can you imagine having one big rock, Sister Mercedes, and you can strike it or you can speak to it, and water come gushing out, and you can't figure out where it's coming around. And when and when you turn around, it looks like that rock is falling. Come on, Jerry. And everywhere they went. Now, how in the world could these people not?
Yes. And also, church, listen to this. Moses is protege. Moses is one that he met went into the promised land. See, if you will listen to your leadership, if you will listen to what God has put in place, you will go into the spiritual kingdom plans. You will be able. When everybody else is confused, running here, running there, going there, going there, you're listening to your leadership that God has put you on, that God has put you in, that God has, and, and, and you may be going through your wilderness experience, but don't Jesus 
let me show you something. Let me show you the kingdoms of the world. It's all mine. He said, let me show you. If you will worship me, he said, I will give you this. Uh, at this point in time, the devil was tempting him not with food, but he was tempting him with fame and fortune, and he was tempting him with a temporary kingdom. And Jesus knew that his kingdom is going to fall because we have the kingdom of darkness and we have the kingdom of light. And the Bible says one of these days that God is going to come back. Hallelujah. And subdue his children. But let me tell you, Day, church, we need to understand that the enemy wants to tempt you when you're at your home hungriest moment for God. He wants to tempt you with the thing that you're hungry for. He wants to tempt you with, with the things of this world. And that's what he did to Jesus. He tempted him with food. He tempted him with the things of this world. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. He, he, he had the right spirit about him. He had the understanding spirit about him. He had the spirit of discernment. He could understand the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And he knew that at this moment in time, this was not God speaking, but this is Satan. He knew it with all of his heart. He said, and he answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the Bible says he didn't give up. See, the devil don't give up. If he can't get you on one thing, he'll try another thing. He tried bread. He tried a temporary kingdom. He tried to offer him everything in the world. And then the Bible says that he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, See, the devil is preaching right here. The devil is trying to preach. And this are, these, these are the false prophets of the world. They, they want to preach like the devil. For it is written. And what he said was true. But God, Jesus knew that he could not honor that spirit. Jesus knew that he could not. He, Jesus knew that he could not be led by that spirit at all. Church. He knew that he was being tempted by a strange spirit that was not of God. It was the spirit of the devil. But it couldn't bother him. It couldn't persuade him. It couldn't lead him in a different direction because he was full of the Holy Ghost. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. He will know. He will teach you the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. That means he gives you the ability to see the spirit of truth and he gives uh, you the ability to walk into the spirit of truth and he gives you the ability to be able to see the spirit of error that's the way the rapture is going to be praise the Lord it's just going to happen no warning he gives you the ability to see when the spirit of error comes you ought to have so much discernment about you that you can hear it knocking on the door. Every time the spirit of error came to Jesus and said, Eat bread. Oh, bow to me. Oh, let me put you on a pinnacle. Let me lift you up high. I told somebody one time, Don't you put me on a pinnacle. I may get dizzy and fall down and bump my head. Oh. I don't want to be put on a pillow because I don't want to get dizzy and fall down and bump my head. Come on, church. The Bible says, For it is written, He shall give His angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in His hand, and in their hand shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Church, at this moment in time, we find that the spirit of error was trying to lift Jesus up. The spirit of error was trying to tell Jesus to do something different than what the Father wanted him to do. But Jesus being led by the Spirit, the Bible says that Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is said. 
Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I believe Sister Nancy at that very time that the devil was tempting Jesus and he didn't know how, he didn't know that he was tempting the very Son of God. He was trying his best, hallelujah, to persuade him to do something else. But for the first time he was seeing a man that he could not control. God wants you to get to the place that you're led by the Spirit and the, the Spirit of Aaron. Isaiah. 
Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive, and receiving of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are Listen, do you think when you begin to study this, you begin to realize this, he's saying he's not just talking about healing, natural healing. He's talking about internally. He said, he, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me to heal you in eternity, internally, internally. To start from the inside out to heal you eternally. Because He has anointed me. See, the anointing is what breaks the yoke. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. The broken heart that somebody else cannot heal. That's right. I can get caught up on that this morning and preach the rest of the day. But I'm here to tell you that He began to read this to them. To preach them, verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? See, the party's over in the hometown. Jesus was led by the Spirit. He came, he went into the wilderness full of the Spirit. He came out of the wilderness with the power of the Spirit. And the first thing that Jesus had to encounter He had to encounter people that their mind was in a box. Is not this Joseph's son? And the Bible says that Jesus couldn't do no mighty miracles there because of unbelief. That this could not bring themselves to believe that the Messiah was standing in front of them. And Jesus began to preach to them and began to talk to them. And so
more than anything today as I come to a close. I want you to remember what Jesus has told us in His Scriptures. I want you to remember that Jesus never gave heed to the wrong spirit. He listened to the right spirit. And that's what we got to do, saints of God. we got to listen to the right spirit. And when we listen to the right spirit, then God will honor us with the power of the spirit. If you ever want to operate and be in the power of the spirit, you got to listen to God and you got to know that God is working in you. you got to know that you're being led to God. Don't be eating bread when you're not supposed to. when you're not supposed to. The church, take a hold of Jesus and understand that the first thing that Jesus encountered is He, under, he encountered unbelief. He encountered uh, people that had their minds in a box. Church. And then, the second thing He encountered is He had to go to work and go ahead and cast out devils. Come on. Come on. The Bible says, I know you ain't got this up there, brother, but I'm going to bring it out anyway. The Bible says that they were astonished at his doctrine, for his words was with power. They were astonished with his doctrine, for his words was with power. See, once you come out of the wilderness and God can trust you to listen to the Holy Spirit, to the right Spirit, then he'll teach you to he'll lead you into places that people has tries to put God in a box. Religion tries to put God in a box. We have so many people today that are preaching and saying that the gifts and the miracles and the signs and the wonders and the speaking in tongues and all that went away with the apostles. Now why would God empower the early church? And leave us, leave a latter day church. Why would he leave us defenseless? No, he didn't leave us defenseless. He gave us the Holy Ghost to fight everybody. Because he knows that when you were born, listen to me, when you were born, you were born into a battle that you didn't ask for. That's why Jesus in his word says, The battle is not yours, it's mine, saith the Lord. It's mine, saith the Lord. The battle's not yours. And every time the enemy wants you to fight him, you remember, church, what Ephesians says, Finally, my brother, be, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his spirit. Hallelujah, church, be strong in the Lord. But the Bible says in verse 33, it says, And in the synagogue there went, there was a man with an un, there was a man that had a spirit of unclean heavens. And cried out with a loud voice. Leave us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Leave us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Now how in the world did the devils know Jesus and the religious people didn't even know who he was? Because they knew, listen, the devil knew him in the beginning. The devil And the reason it was not lightning because he had all kinds of onyx stones in him. He had all kinds of stones and precious stones in him. And all of a sudden, when he tried to come against God in the third of the angel, the Bible says, bam! He, was, he fell from the glory of God and all you could see was just a little old sparkler. Kind of like a little old sparkler going down. I fell. He said, I seen him fall from heaven like lightning. He says, leave us alone, thou Jesus of Nazareth. Now why didn't the Nazareth people, why didn't the Nazarenes know him? Why didn't, why didn't the Nazareth people know him? Because they were in religion instead of relationship. If we want God, we gotta be, we got to be in relationship instead of religion. Religion tries to dominate and control. Let me tell you something. This pastor here will never try to dominate and control you. I will teach you what the Word says. And I will preach what the Word says. And I will let the chips fall where they fall. And you make up your mind there. Who am I to tell you?
tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you what the word to do. And it's your decision what you should do. Are you going to be in religion? Are you going to be in your little religion, in your little box, in your little uh, area? And you're not going to have an open mind where God can teach you anything else? Or are you going to get in relationship? we got to get in relationship. It's a shame. It's a shame. I don't know. I'm glad I wasn't a part of the Nazarenes. I'm glad I wasn't a part of the Nazarenes at that time when the Jesus came in. And they said, is not this the son of Joseph? They didn't even know who he was. But then when he went into the synagogue, the unclean spirit, the unclean devil knew who Jesus was. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace, shut your mouth. When the devil comes talking to you, when the, when the wrong spirit comes talking to you, you got to come to the place that you say, Hold thy peace. Shut your mouth. I have been known to hang up on people. If they call me with the wrong spirit, I say, Whoop. Well, they're going to hear that. Yeah. I have been known when people come and counsel with me, if they don't want to hear what I'm not going to try to control you. You can do what you want to do. But you're going to have to listen to God with relationship. He said, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. Wow. And they were amazed. Listen to this. And they were all amazed and speaking and spake among themselves, saying, what word is this? For what authority? And for with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits and they came out of him. Then the Bible said the fame went out all over the region once again. Why? Because under pressure he didn't give up. Church, Thank you. when the enemy puts you under pressure, you can't give up. You gotta listen, and we gotta listen to the right spirit. When the devil puts us under pressure, we gotta listen to the right spirit. Church, if you listen to the right spirit, then you will see God move every time. God will fill you, and God will empower you to be led by the Spirit. You would stand you be. I've enjoyed this today. Hallelujah. Pray for Brother Ed. He'll be back next week. He's on vacation. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this service this morning. We thank you for these people that are here. God, we thank you more for being led by the Spirit this morning and teaching your people that God, that we've got to be led by your Spirit and we've got to know your Spirit and not be led by the Spirit of error. God, I pray today that you will fill your people and empower your people. Oh God, to say no to the devil when they have to and say yes to you, Lord, and be living in the Spirit and do all things. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray that you will touch the remaining of this service. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen.